Well, it's reached 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite hot. And my welder's starting to smell a little bit warm too. But this thing's continuous duty, so it's it should be fine. Nice hot air coming off these vents here. Today we're gonna be trying to make a DIY electric kiln. I have this nichrome wire, which I tested in the previous video, and I already bent it up. And I think it, it fits really nicely. I, was, I wasn't thinking it would fit so well. Of course, whenever I heat it up, it'll kind of just like droop a little bit, but we'll see what, what kind of effects it has. I think that's perfect. So this little flower pot will be the inside of the kiln. Now, what I'm going to do is let's get some sand into this bucket. Now I'm going to put this on here and put some sand around it. Well, look at that. I think that turned out wonderfully. It's very simple and wonderful. Only like a couple dollars in parts. Now I can have this little planting like bottom thing and I can use that as a lid for it. Well I have everything else set out and I even have my thermocouple out so I can see what temperature is up. This is good for up to 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the only thing I need to do is make a good way to have the thermocouple inside here. So I'm going to see if I can drill a hole through this ceramic. Be very careful otherwise I'll crack it. That actually worked. And I lucked out. It was the right size, too. Perfectly sized. Awesome. Let's fire the kiln up now and see what temperatures we get. So we're going to start it off without the lid nor thermocouple on it, just so we can see the coil glow and make sure it's heating up. We'll start at 15 amps. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Okay, so now let's actually test to see what temperature we're getting. We'll go down to the lowest setting, 10 amps. Now we'll rig it up to have the lid on it and the thermocouple. Now let's try that again. Temperature is going up quite a bit. Now unfortunately this sand is really soaking wet, so it'll probably steam a little bit. Maybe it'll even crack, don't know. Temperature is still going up quite fast. You can see the filament is glowing now. I didn't think 10 amps would have enough power to make it glow, but I guess it does. Might be a good idea to have this handy. Well, it seems like the temperature isn't rising as fast as it was before, so I'm going to turn it off and see how, how long it takes for it to start dipping in, in temperature again.
Oh, that, go, yeah, that goes down pretty fast. This time I'm going to try 15 amps of power. Seven hundred degrees already. It's actually glowing so bright that you can see the light from the coils on the inside. Damn, that's hot. I can hear crackling sounds from inside there, so I think the pot might have cracked. Well, it's not going up as fast as it did before, so let's try 20 amps now. Over a thousand degrees, awesome! That's at 20 amps. Sometimes you'll see some puffs of steam coming off the, the wet sand. Well, it's reached 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite hot. And my welder's starting to smell a little bit warm too. But this thing's continuous duty, so it's it should be fine. Nice hot air coming off these vents here. I think we should turn it off and see wh what it did. Ho ho. Awesome. Wasn't quite red hot, but oh well. At least the porcelain wasn't, I mean. Now the temperature's going back up. I'm quite happy with that first run. That went really nicely. I could have gone a lot hotter because these wires can get up to 2700 degrees, but unfortunately I didn't want to melt them to where they just sagged because there's really nothing holding them in place except for their own rigidity. Because if I went a little bit higher to like 25 or 30 amps, then they'd all kind of droop down and probably short circuit and probably melt the wire. But yeah, that's pretty awesome.
Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya.